Hey guys, I'm Hop, thanks for tuning in to DFB TV. I've been on a quest to build an AR9 on a budget, and in doing so I've tried just about everything. I've gone through so many parts at this point that it would have been way cheaper just to buy a CMMG Banshee and call it a day, but it's not too late for you. In this video we're going to talk about dedicated lowers versus conversion lowers, and we're going to talk about Colt versus Glock mags. How you choose to feed your AR9 is probably the most important thing, so it gets a whole video to itself. This is the beating heart of the platform, and everything else is secondary to a reliable feeding mechanism. In part 2, we'll talk about barrels, muzzle devices, bolt carriers, and buffer configurations, all the little details that affect how the gun shoots. I've tested out, I think, every major category of AR9 conversion platform, including a drop-in magwell conversion for Colt mags, the Torque mag magwell conversion for Glock mags, and the Mean Arms Endomag inserts for P mags. We'll be comparing all three of these to a dedicated AR9 lower for Colt mags made by Palmetto State Armory. I think pistol caliber carbines are pretty dumb, but they are still a lot of fun. For my money, building an AR9 with a 16-inch barrel is a waste of time and money when the Beretta CX-4 Storm exists. So what we're talking about today is actually pistol caliber pistols. The two primary AR9 pistols I've built have a 4-inch and an 8-inch barrel respectively. And now the $10 million question. Glock mags or Colt mags? Glock mags have the advantage of being cheap, they're easily available, lightweight, and you probably already have some. Colt SMG pattern stick mags have the advantage of looking cool but they're heavy, relatively expensive, and they don't work in a Glock. Believe me, I tried. If you use Glock magazines, you can share them between your AR9 and a Glock sidearm, and you can use pistol magazine carriers as well. Obviously, I didn't listen to my own advice because I mostly settled on Colt mags. The AR9 pistol caliber pistol is a fun range gun for me, so I went with the fun Colt mags. Do as I say, not as I do, I guess. The first thing I tried when starting my AR9 project was a drop-in magwell conversion made by KAK Industries. Several companies make a variation of this. It's a drop-in magwell block that has its own built-in ejector and last shot bolt hold open system, and it uses the existing magazine release of your standard AR lower. Fit may not be great with all lowers. I tested it with an Anderson AR pistol lower and I had to hammer it into place. Surprisingly, this didn't do any permanent damage to the lower, I hope. So it drops into place, or hammers into place, depending on your lower. There's one set screw on the top and two set screws in the bottom of the magwell to keep it in position. Of course, on mine it was locked in tight by the cold welding process of using a dead blow hammer and a thick wooden dowel to bash it into place. So the set screws were more of a formality. This is theoretically reversible, though it's not a quick job. After getting the conversion out, I've continued using this lower for standard 5.56 pistol uppers again, and it's still chugging along just fine. It is cheaper to convert a lower if you already have one and you don't want to buy an entirely new lower. But the cost of a cheap lower plus the mag block is already getting pretty close to the cost of a dedicated lower, so I don't recommend starting a build from scratch with one of these. I had initial reliability problems with this, but I'm pretty sure they were tied to the buffer I was using and not the fault of the magwell conversion. We'll talk more about buffer weight in the next video, but once I sorted that out, the KAK magwell adapter worked pretty damn well. I mostly tested it with ASC and metal form mags, but it also worked pretty well with a Pro Mag metal lined plastic mag. I put a ton of rounds through the gun with this adapter. It's definitely an option. The other magwell conversion I tried out is the Torque Mag Magdapt. It's a drop in magwell conversion that consists of two pieces. Each is held into the lower by a set screw. The Torque Magdapt is one of the cheaper options out there. 100 bucks will get you the Magwell conversion plus two 20 round Torque mags, or it's about 60 bucks for just the conversion. The Magdapt uses either Torque's in house 20 round Glock compatible mags, or standard Glock mags with a conversion cut to interface with the AR's mag catch. The adapter comes with a cutting jig you can use to shave some of the plastic off of the Glock mags to create a secondary mag catch cut. The process of converting in lower is very fast, and the conversion kit is pretty small. There's no reason you couldn't keep the mag blocks and a hex key in a ziplock and just keep it with your range bag. When I initially installed the conversion, I racked the bolt and it felt way too stiff, so I lowered the mag blocks just a bit until the bolt racked smoothly. I own a pair of calipers, but I don't know how they work and I'm allergic to fine measurements, so I pretty much just fucking eyeballed it. On the first range trip, I dumped four mags with no problem. All told, I ended up putting 450 rounds through both of my AR9 uppers using the Torque Mag converted lower, and the entire time I only had one failure to feed from the first round of a converted Glock mag. 
The magwell insert shows almost no sign of wear after that many rounds. The 20 round torque mags also work just fine in my actual Glocks. Converting Glock mags for use with the Magdapt is pretty easy. I'd rather not cut on them, but a converted Glock mag still works totally fine in a Glock, so it's not like you're destroying them. I have some concern that the mag block could shift slightly and negatively affect reliability without being obvious at a glance. I shot close to 500 trouble-free rounds through it without messing with the screws or seeing any problems, so I don't think that's too much of a concern. The only downside to the torque mag is no last shot hold open. If I have the choice, I'd rather have last shot hold open than not have it, but AK guys seem to get by just fine without. If you don't want to install anything into your lower at all, another option is the Mean Arms Endo Mag. The Endo Mag is a drop-in insert for a standard P mag that converts it to hold and feed 9mm. The Endo Mag replaces the stock P mag internals and contains its own feed lips and ejector. This means no conversion to your lower is required. Just stick an AR9 upper on top and an Endo Mag in the mag well, and you've got an AR9. You do save money not having to convert your lower, but the additional cost is made up in the mags. The cost of the mag insert plus the cost of a P mag ends up being about 40 bucks per mag. This gives it the lowest minimum entry cost of all of these options. But if you want to have a lot of mags for your AR9, it doesn't scale very well. Because the ejector is built into the magazine insert, the endo mag makes your gun behave a bit strangely. If you remove the magazine, you can no longer eject a live round. You can rack the bolt all day long, and the round will stay on the extractor claw and just get cycled back into the chamber. In order to safely clear the gun, you will need to rack the bolt back with the magazine in, lock the bolt to the rear, and then pull the magazine. So we just had a failure to fire, which gives us a really good opportunity to take a look at what I think is kind of the fatal flaw of the endomag. So we've got a loaded magazine in here, and we have got a round in the chamber. Uh, it didn't go off because it didn't go fully into battery. So let's say somebody's been shooting this and they decide that they would like to stop and clear the gun. If they remove the magazine, they have also removed the ejector. So now there's nothing to eject the round from the chamber. So we pull the charging handle back. The round is going to stay on the extractor claw. It's going to stay on the bolt. It doesn't matter how many times you rack that bolt. That round is not going to come out. And the reason that this can be a problem is either if you don't really check, pull the mag, rack the bolt, you're like, okay, we're good to go. Pull that trigger, you're gonna sail around off somewhere. Hopefully it's downrange if you're practicing your rules of gun safety. However, you could get pretty careful about this because a lot of people will pull the bolt back and then inspect the chamber. And I don't know if you can see right now, but this sure looks like an empty chamber to me. I'm pretty much following the rules of gun safety here. Pulled the, pulled the mag out, pulled the bolt back, I'm inspecting the chamber, I could even Stick my hand in there, put my finger in there, feel that there's no round in the chamber. But look what happens when the bolt comes back forward. There's that round hiding out of sight on the bolt. So, see? That's why I kind of think that even when these things work, they're not a great idea. I spent a lot of time testing these mags, but not a lot of rounds for reasons that will become obvious in a second. For most of the testing period with two different uppers and half a dozen different lowers, the reliability of the endo mag was pretty much 0%. There is a break-in and fitting process to these mags, but it didn't work for me. I ordered a three-pack of the endo mags, and all three of the converted P mags I used were a disaster. It would usually take about a dozen tries to get around a chamber and the gun to go all the way into battery. When it did manage to fire around, it wouldn't manage to cycle. I looked online and found at least a few people who claimed to have working endo mags, but none of them could agree on how to make the damn things work. I read all sorts of mysticism about these things. They only work with Glock mag bolt carriers. No, they only work with Colt mag carriers. No, they do work with either of those, but they won't work with hybrid style carriers. No, they only work with hybrid style carriers. And so on and so forth. I think all of that is garbage data created from trash anecdotes. Here's what I did. After exhausting my other options, I took the two endo mags that were the most chewed up and knocked the feed lips back a little bit with some sandpaper. After that, one of them started to work really well, although the other one is still hit or miss to the tune of about 50% reliable. It might just need some more quality time with the 200 grit. Failure to go into battery. 
So I did get it working, eventually, sort of, but the feed lips and ejector are plastic and already missing a fair amount of material due to wear from firing. And now, also, sandpaper. So how long will it keep working? I'm not sure, but I worry about it. The mags look like they're about to suffer a total existence failure, and I'm sick of messing around with it, so I'll probably just pull this crap out of there so I can get my P-mags back. Eventually, I got tired of fussing with magwell conversions, and I just bought a Colt mag-compatible AR-9 pistol lower made by Palmetto State Armory. Like all PSA lowers, it was improperly assembled from the factory. Okay, that's not fair. Hashtag, not all PSAs. The buffer tube was not screwed in far enough, so the first time I shot it, the buffer tent and spring flew out under recoil, fell into the fire control group, and got mangled up by the recoil cycle. I've seen three PSA lowers do this in person and heard about it online about another two billion times. The fix is easy, just pull the mangled up spring and detent out of the fire control group and keep going. You don't, strictly speaking, need the buffer detent, so just take it out and call it a day. I could disassemble the lower and screw the buffer tube all the way in, but PSA did properly stake the castle nut. Reliability with the PSA lower has been very good. It won't take the plastic pro mags like the KAK conversion did, but it works great with the ASC and metal form mags. Like the KAK conversion, it has last shot hold open and a built-in metal ejector. So overall, we can compare the different options in a few categories. First is price. Each of these has a minimum cost, which is the conversion system with one magazine, but it doesn't always scale proportionally, so we'll also factor in the cost of the conversion system with six magazines, which represents sort of an average number of spare mags. First is the endo mag. 30 bucks for an insert plus 10 bucks for a P mag gets you in at a $40 minimum entry price. If you scale it up to six mags, that means two of the three packs plus six P mags, and you're looking at about 220 bucks. This doesn't factor in the cost of the sandpaper, but you could always rub the endomag against the sidewalk for free. For the KAK Industries Colt Magwell conversion, it's 100 bucks for the insert plus 15 bucks for a Colt mag, if you go with the cheap ASCs. We can ballpark the entry price at about 115 bucks or 190 if you have six mags. The Torque Magdapt is the overall budget king at about 60 bucks for the insert plus approximately 15 bucks for a Glock mag. It gives it a cheap minimum entry price of about 75 bucks, or about 160 bucks with six magazines. The dedicated Palmetto State lower doesn't really compare properly in terms of price. It'll generally be about 200 bucks, but it can be bought as a complete lower. If you factor in the price of a cheap lower to the other kits, then their cost would go up significantly. As far as which lower option is the most reliable, I'd say it's a tie between the Torque Magdapt and a dedicated AR9 Colt Mag lower. I did have issues with the AR9 lower early on, but I think it was due to issues with buffer weight and spring weight. I had already resolved those by the time I started testing the torque, so I'll put those two on par with each other. In terms of best features, it's a close tie between the PSA AR9 lower and the Colt mag conversion. Both have real last shot hold open and no weird bullshit like the endo mag. The PSA lower does a better job of funneling mags into the mag well than the drop-in conversion, so I'd say the dedicated AR9 performs the best, but not by a lot. So depending on whether or not you're willing to buy a whole new serial number, you have two options. If you just want to convert an existing lower for cheap, get the Torque Magdapt and use Glock mags. If you don't mind buying an entirely new gun, I still think you should get a fresh lower, Colt mags or Glock mags, doesn't really matter. If you really want to make an AR9, it's worth using a dedicated lower. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, I'll try to answer them as best as I can since I've been doing this for a while and spent a whole lot of my own money on this project. In the next video, we'll talk about the small details that make up a functioning AR9. Barrels, bolts, buffers, brakes, I guess. So make sure you're subscribed to TFB TV if you want to see it. Thanks for watching, guys. TFB TV is supported by Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. We appreciate their support, so please check them out. You can also support us directly via Subscribestar and Patreon. There are links to both of those in the video description. See you next time. Why?